Hey guys, it's Gary J. It's raining outside. It's a good day, I guess, to make a video. So this is another one of my favorite pistols right here. And this is called the Ruger Single Six 22 Long Rifle Pistol. The Ruger Single Six. It's a cowboy type pistol. And we see here the red bird of, uh, of Ruger. Ruger makes great pistols, rifles, shotguns. Uh, they're just golden, whatever they touch. And I have several Ruger uh, guns, but uh, they're really awesome. This is the older version uh, of the Ruger Single Six. Now, this particular version came out in uh, about 1953, about 1953. And the reason we call it the older version is because with this one, we have three screws right here. And in 1972 or three, they came out with the new version of the Ruger Single Six uh, pistol. And in that version, you had two dial pins. You didn't have the screws anymore. You just had two dial pins here uh, that secured it. And that was a new version. One of the reasons they came out with the new version was that uh, it had safety issue uh, that they, they worried about. And that was when you pull the hammer back, uh, there would be a sliding block that would come up to uh, protect the uh, hammer from striking the firing pin in case you dropped it. One of the problems with a single six, now we've already checked and made sure it's unloaded. One of the problems with a single six is that if, uh, if you've got a live round at the top of the cylinder here and you drop this pistol onto the hammer here, it could go forward and drive the firing pin into the primer or the primer or the rim fire, depending on what kind of pistol you have in the Ruger, and cause it to go off. And people have been killed that way before. Uh, very, uh, very few, my friend. But that was a that was one of the problems with the the single six. So in about 1972, Ruger made their new version, which had a sliding. Uh, platform inside here that would protect the firing pin from being struck if, even if you dropped it on the trigger and they recalled all of these uh, to um, repair those to make sure they didn't have that problem but anybody that plays with a single six knows never put a, a cartridge in the top cylinder just in case you drop it uh, and make sure it doesn't hit the uh, the hammer so uh, that's generally what you do with a single six. Now you may wonder, uh, looking at this one, this one looks like it was it came out yesterday. This one, this one was bought in 1965, and it looks brand spanking new. Look at the grip on here, not a scratch on that. This other side here, this pistol is about as mint condition as you can actually find in one of these older Rugers, 1965. And you can read Ruger there. So this was the 22 long rifle. Now, back in 1953, what was going on? Uh, what would be the market for these kind of pistols? Well, back then, uh, looking at television was something that was new. And what did they have on television in the 50s and early 60s? A lot of cowboy movies. They had uh, Gunsmoke. They had High Chaparral, they had Cheyenne Bodie, they had um, uh, The Rifleman, I mentioned that. Uh, they had The Big Valley and uh, Bonanza. And what did all of those cowboy movies have in common? A single six pistol. Everybody had a single six pistol. So that was kind of the, the market here. Now what Ruger did was he refined the single six a lot and uh, that's one thing i like about this these single sixes right here uh cowboy type pistols uh you still have the same type of grip on the single six the same kind of action on the single six here and pretty much the same pistol but you have a better front sight on it a lot better front sight on on the ruger single six and on the rear here we have a really really nice uh adjustable rear sight you can adjust it up you can adjust it right and left 
and you can be very accurate with these pistols. This pistol has about a six inch barrel, which that's about what you want. The longer the barrel, the truer it's going to shoot, more accurate. Uh, so these pistols are just uh, really awesome pistols. They last forever. And they're easy to uh, load and, and uh, unload. And uh, the way that you load these pistols is, on this particular older version right here, uh, you can. it has three clicks to it. You pull the, the hammer back one click. That's one click. And that's kind of your safety in case you drop the pistol on the, on the uh, hammer spur to keep it from causing a round to go off. Again, you really don't want to have a round up here. Uh, that's just a great safety mechanism or a safety way to, to keep from actually having to worry about a chamber firing. But these guns are very safe, especially the ones after 72, 73, the new version. So that's your safety right there, that first click. The second click, you pull it back to a second click. Now that's half cocked. Pull it back all the way, that's fully cocked. So we pull it in a half cocked position. Now we've already checked the gun so we know it's unloaded. And we pull open the gate right here. And this is what we see an open cylinder right here. We take our 22 long rifle cartridge and put it in this hole right here. And then we turn with our hand the cylinder, place another cartridge in here, turn the cylinder again, place the cartridge in and do that it holds six rounds six rounds so once you have put all your cartridges in cartridges in here you close your gate pull back on your hammer press your trigger down and carefully let your trigger forward and then pull it back one click to the safety and now you're ready to take your gun and aim it at your target okay As you're aiming at your target uh you get ready to shoot what you're going to do is have your finger here straight out like this. When you get ready to shoot, pull your hammer back one. Well, it was already back one, so that would be two and three. And that's fully cocked. Now take your finger off the side here and uh, place it on the trigger as you're aiming at whatever you're aiming at. And uh, slowly pull the trigger. Now this trigger pull is amazingly easy. Um, it feels like it's only like two pounds. A lot of pistols have five, six pound pull, which is hard for uh, consumer reasons and uh, liabilities. But this is a very easy pulling trigger right here, and I really uh, like that about these Rugers. So you shoot. You have to pull it back every time you shoot. And so every time you shoot, you're going to pull that back. Now, once you've shot six times, and now it's time to reload, you simply open your gate here again. And here you have a plunger. This plunger, you push that. Now, you got to line it up. See, it's out of line right here with the plunger. So I turned the cylinder. Now, first of all, I got to pull this hammer back to that second half cock position and line the cylinder up and now I can push this plunger and you can kind of feel it as you move that cylinder and see the plunger rod comes all the way out that's the plunger rod that pushes the casing out you're not going to pull that casing out with your finger because it expands from the explosion you know going on so once you do that you take out one round you turn the cylinder again and then push it again, turn the cylinder again, push it again, and you get all your um, casings out. And then you can spin your, your cylinder very easily and look and make sure you got all of them out. And after you've done that, then you can start reloading. You take your cartridge, put it in here, turn it, another cartridge, another cartridge, another cartridge. And when you're through, close your gate and pull your hammer back and then press your trigger and carefully let the hammer all the way down and pull it back one time and that's your safety now you're ready to aim again keep your finger off the trigger aim again 
And uh, once you get ready to shoot, you can pull your hammer back and then place your finger on the trigger and uh, get your aim and, uh, and shoot. So very simple to load and unload and very good starter pistol. And these will last you for the rest of your life. Now, uh, this one has an interchangeable cylinder. And with this one, uh, this is a 22 long rifle. It'll shoot 22 shorts. A lot of these, especially on the newer versions, have an extra cylinder like this one. This extra cylinder on the newer ones uh, is a magnum cylinder. A magnum cylinder. So it shoot 22 magnums. Now, if you had a magnum cylinder, you do not want to shoot 22 shorts or 22 long rifles in a magnum cylinder. The 22 magnum is a little, just a little bit longer than the uh, 22 long rifle. So you don't want to shoot those in a, in a magnum cylinder. Now, with this particular gun, this cylinder here is not a magnum cylinder because this is the older version right here, too. And even the box right here tells you that this is just an extra cylinder. So it's not a magnum. I wish it were a magnum. But so we have this cylinder here. And you see kind of this spine right here. This, is, this goes to the back of the gun toward you. And this part right here goes toward the end of the barrel. So this is an extra cylinder right here. Reminds me of Clint Eastwood movie. Clint Eastwood, you might remember he was, I don't remember which one he played in, uh, all of the good, the bad, and the ugly, well, was it in that one or not? But anyway, he shot like six times, and after he shot, uh, he flipped open the gate of his single six right here, and this is how you change out the cylinder, you flip it over like this right here, and right here is a pin that you push down it's spring loaded so you push this pin down and here's a rod right here that rod goes all the way through the center of the cylinder so you push down this rod right here you got your cylinder you put it in this position here half caught press this button down hold it down take your fingernail and push pull on this rod right here okay so once you once you've done that, you can pull this rod out. And so there's your rod. It goes right through the cylinder, right through the center of the cylinder, like this right here. Let's see, get it in view. Okay, and that's what's going to hold your cylinder in place. All right. So now that you've done that, you got your hammer in a half cock position, and you're holding your finger here on it. You want to take the cylinder out, then you simply just reach in here and pull it out. And it goes in the same way. So you reach in here, pull this out, grab your other cylinder. You could have that loaded. I wouldn't advise that. But if this one was loaded, like in Clint Eastwood, he reached in his pocket, pulled out his other cylinder, and threw that cylinder in here. And then he closed the gate on it, and then he turned the gun over, and I've got my finger here holding that cylinder, and he took his rod here. His will set up a little bit different than this one, and once you set the rod here, it only goes so far because this pin stops it. So what you have to do is press this pin and push it down. Sometimes you may have to turn this a little bit to make sure that that pin lines up. And uh, so this is where it should look right here. You've got like one, two, three rings right here. And you can tell when you turn it, it's tight. And uh, it's cranking the way it's supposed to. You don't want to interchange cylinders that are not made for this particular pistol because this thing is like a watch on the gears it turns the cylinder precisionly to line it up because you want that cylinder to be dead center of the barrel if you got the wrong cylinder 
Or if you take this pistol apart and mess with the gearing system here, you can you can knock it out of timing. If you knock it out of timing, then that cylinder may be partially pointed on the main barrel cylinder, and uh, you can have an explosion. So don't mess with the don't try to take these apart and mess with that unless you really know what you're doing. So you see how easy it is to change out the cylinder. pointed on the main barrel cylinder and uh, you can have an explosion so don't mess with the don't try to take these apart and mess with that unless you really know what you're doing so you see how easy it is to change out the cylinder now in real time if you want to change out the cylinder it'll go kind of like this right here open it up half cock press the button here Pull out your rod, flip it over, pull that cylinder out, put this cylinder in, close the gate, push the button, push the cylinder down, check it, and that's it. So you could change it out fairly quick if you wanted to. So this is just a really super nice pistol. Now with this one, uh, I have a receipt on this one where it was bought uh, for a rel from, from, from a relative. And on this one, the price of it was $69.23. And it was purchased back in 1965. 11365 and this was bought for a lady's husband and uh, so at the price of 60 60 well actually at 69 dollars and 50 cent 69 dollars and 50 cent back in 1965 so you say well that's not much money well you got to calculate inflation how much money was $69 back in 1965 compared to today? It would be equivalent today as paying uh, around $500 or $550 for this pistol back in 1965. So that was a lot of money back in those days. Imagine today if you pay five or $600 for a pistol today, which that's about the normal cost of a lot of them. Uh... She spent a lot of money back in those days because those were tough times back in 65. And again, it's just a beautiful pistol right here. Uh, I love the design of it. And uh, these things are really, really accurate too. And uh, you use that 22 long rifle and uh, you can buy 250 cartridges at Walmart for about $22. So you can shoot all day with these things, and they're just a lot of fun plinking and stuff like that. And again, with these adjustable sights, they're very accurate. This is one of the better versions of a single six pistol. And it's a special metal that uh, they use on this right here, too, making it one of the toughest pistols in the uh, in the world that time. Maybe you can read that. That's a single six frame made with chrome molly molly denim steel probably pronounced that wrong but uh that was well made the strongest simple uh single action 22 frame on the market so couldn't buy a better pistol than that uh at that time on the 22 now they made them in 357 and i'll show you 357 uh as well which is like the sister of this one here but um if you're looking for a first pistol uh, this right here is one of the best ones that'll last you a whole lifetime and uh, they don't jam revolvers don't jam like uh, an automatic pistol no matter what kind of automatic pistol you have it can hang up on you revolvers will never hang up and uh, so you can be you can count on that as a, as a good thing 
uh, if you were in a bad situation. And a twenty two long rifle p- pistol will kill a person. I have seen them, the results of people being shot with twenty two rifles and twenty two pistols, and even one just like this. Uh, they can be very deadly. So you can use them for self protection. You can use them for fishing. You can uh, you can use them for hunting, like squirrel hunting, something like that. Um, rabbit hunting. Uh, they're just a very versatile pistol. Six inch barrel is kind of really what you want, somewhere around there. The shorter the barrel, the less accurate they'll be. And uh, but really well made pistol. Now, as I mentioned, this one's probably uh, five or six hundred dollars. If you try to buy one today, a brand new one today, you're paying about five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. This one is worth a lot more because it is got the three screws. It's the old style. It's in mint condition. Um, so the value is way up on these right here. That's one of the reasons I have this one as collectors. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Gary J.